I think it's uh, very important that at meetings like ADPD we can uh, discuss vascular pathology. Uh, because the vascular pathology becomes more and more important as uh, people age. And as we know, we've been able to make the diagnosis of uh, neurodegenerative diseases earlier and earlier, but the symptoms really develop when people get older. So if you're looking at people with dementia, moderate or severe dementia, and, and even sometimes important early symptoms, very often these are people who are already 85 years old or in their 90s. And if you look at the brains of these people, very often you find uh, vascular pathology. Uh, now, we used to think that vascular pathology was mostly stroke, but uh, what we've come to learn in the uh, 21st century is that actually small lesions are very important, particularly cortical microinfarcts. Now, these are lesions that are usually uh, less than 500 microns in, uh, in size, so that they're usually not visible on uh, neuroimaging. One can see a few of the bigger ones, but at least 90% are probably not, not seen. So it's very easy to miss, and yet we know that over half of people in those ages have uh, cortical microinfarcts. Now, why is this important? Because if we look at cortical microinfarcts, we know that they represent a very powerful correlate of cognitive function. Uh, probably as powerful as neurofibrillary tangles in uh, people with neurodegenerative disease. So in studies of uh, pure vascular pathology, they represent over 36% of the cognitive variability, and that's, that's quite high. Um, now you can see the problem. We have a very important lesion, and yet we cannot see it when we do neuroimaging. So the idea is to try and identify among older people who might have cortical microinfarcts and who might not. And one of the ways to do this might be to look at clinical characteristics. So clinical characteristics can be um, encapsulated in vascular scores. And so the idea was to look at vascular scores to see if ischemic vascular scores could predict the presence of cortical microinfarcts. So uh, we used a, a vascular score that was developed for people with atrial fibrillation to try and decide whether one would have to anticoagulate them uh, or not, which is the CHADS VASC score in its uh, A2S2 uh, version. and looked at over 150 uh, uh, consecutive uh, autopsies to see if the CHADS VASC score was related to the presence of cortical microinfarct. So the good news is that it is related. Uh, because if you have a higher VASC score, uh, you, uh, if the cutoff is greater than five, you have more than double um, the risk of having cortical microinfarct. So it does have some predictive power. The bad news is that you cannot really use it on an individual basis because the sensitivity specificity remain too low. So we need to, uh, to do better. And this is regarding cortical microinfarcts. Well, obviously we have to try and find either better ways to do the imaging but this is complicated because if you go up in power in the imaging, you end up seeing uh, artifacts. And so you really can't tell. We either have to find a completely new way of looking uh, uh, at the brain or find other correlates. And to find other correlates of cortical microinfarcts, we really need to understand what is the mechanism behind them. It appears that actually vascular risk factors are important, but they may not be the most important. Um, probably hypoperfusion may be a, a, an important mechanism because we find these cortical microinfarcts in watershed areas. So that uh, these seem to be areas that are particularly prone to hypoperfusion. So if we can understand the mechanisms a little bit better, then maybe we can understand the correlates. And then since this represents an important new therapeutic target, we can maybe propose new, uh, new treatments.